Hello everyone, this is another Physics 30 example question. This one is lesson six, and this one's called Magnetic Force on a Moving Charge. We're gonna be using our hand rule three, uh, but more importantly, we're gonna be analyzing different systems. And this is where it all starts coming together. So let's take a look at the, the example. We have a proton, here it is, there's our proton and it's accelerated from rest. So it's not, it has negligible kinetic energy at this point. And then it's accelerated as a result of this potential difference here of 40,000 volts. So it's gonna be accelerated uh, from this plate to this plate. And then at this plate, there's a little hole in the plate, which allows the proton to pass through the gap rather than just smashing into the plate. And so it passes through the gap and at this point, it enters a magnetic field, which is represented by these dots. And the magnitude of that field is 580 milliteslas. Okay. Um, we need to determine the radius of curvature in the field. And we need to say whether this curvature is clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's look at this in two parts. First of all, we're going to analyze this part here. This is where the proton is accelerated from rest to some speed. And then the second part is where the proton enters this uniform magnetic field. So let's break this down. All right. Well, it's at rest to begin with. And then it's, let's say that this is turned on and it is accelerated. So hopefully this is clear with parallel plates. Very common situation is to use these parallel plates as an, as an accelerator for a charged particle. So in the parallel plates, we're going to think about this in terms of energies. And remember, we've got all of these tools at our, at our, at our disposal. If we look at our data sheets, we can see all the physics principles. We could use forces. We could use, so that would be dynamics. We could use energies, which is what we're going to do here. Um, yeah, we can look at all these different ideas. But hopefully you're getting used to using this idea of a conservation of energy. There'd be an initial energy and a final energy. And since we're dealing here with um, subatomic particle, we're going to completely ignore gravity. And we're just going to talk about the effects of the kinetic energy. So that'd be EKI, the initial kinetic energy. Maybe there's some electrical energy initial. And then kinetic energy final. And maybe there's some electrical energy final. So let's think about what's happening at the very beginning. At this point here, it's at rest. So we can get rid of our... We can put a zero through our EK. There is no kinetic energy initial. It's all electric potential energy. So we can just state this as electric potential initial. And then at the end, at this point here, it's used up all of its electrical energy, if you like. The field um, is now, it's reached its lowest state of energy in terms of the electric energies. It, it's a positively charged particle, because it's a proton, and hopefully you can see that this is all going to be positive because the battery here has a positive side here. And so this proton really wants to get to the negatives. And so it's used up all of its energy by this point here. In other words, 0% electrical energy at this point, which means we can cancel this out. So what this is saying is that all of the initial electrical potential energy is entirely converted into the final kinetic energy. And so that means we can make a statement. We can say that the electrical energy, in other words, the VQ, the voltage times the charge, is going to be equal to one half m final squared. Okay, so this is going to give us the velocity. Okay, we can rewrite this as 2vq over the mass square rooted. And so that gives us, if we write all this in, 
we're going to have 2 times 40 kilovolts there times the charge of a proton which is 1 decimal 6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs over the mass of a proton which is 1 decimal 6 7 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms and this whole thing square rooted and that's going to give us a velocity of 2 decimal 7 6 8 lots of other decimal places here times 10 to the 6 meters per second and that seems reasonable to me um, we can do a quick check comparing this to the speed of light um, and that ends up being 0.92% of the speed of light. So that's perfectly reasonable speed. It's well below our 10% threshold. Um, as soon as things go past being closer than 10% of the speed of light, we, we, we really should be using special relativity and Lorentz uh, formulas, but we're going to stay well clear of that. So this is a pretty reasonable speed for a subatomic particle going through a parallel plate. Okay, so we have the speed of the proton as it goes into the magnetic field. Now, why is that important? Well, as this charged particle moves through this magnetic field, it's going to experience a force. And that force is going to act on it as it's moving. And so hopefully this is familiar to you, but because uh, we would have covered this in class, but this is going to be a, a circular motion. The force acting on this proton is going to continually act on it in a circular way. In other words, the force as a result of the interaction with the magnetic field is continually pushing it into the center of a curve. And so this force magnetic is going to be equivalent to the force centripe uh, cent centripetal force. So let's draw this out first of all. We'll get our hand rule out. We'll end up answering B first, but uh, I just wanted to draw it out so we can see what's happening. So here's our hand, and I'm going to move this around so that the current, there we go, just about there, the current is going to be in line with the direction of the proton. So let's see if I can move this up. There it is, the proton's going down, and now this hand is using the fingers, so the field has to go uh, out of the page. So you're going to have to imagine how this hand would rotate around and the, um, the, this, this finger here, the, um, the field finger, this is going to be coming out of the page, which means the force finger is going to be pushing to the left of the page. Go ahead and try that out if you want. Get your hand out, get used to moving it around. But what that means is that the force, as this proton enters the magnetic field, it's going to experience a force this way. And this means that the proton is going to start to curve. And as it curves, the force is going to be continually perpendicular. So there's going to be this right angle to the motion constantly. And that's going to mean, as it keeps going around, this for the direction of the force is going to change to maintain this 90 degrees. And so this is going to create circular motion. And circular motion has a formula. In other words, this magnetic force is going to be the centripetal force, or the, cent uh, the, centri the centripetal force pushing towards the center of the circle. So we're starting to deal with forces, and so that should trigger something in our brains. We've got, we have dynamics, that's the study of forces. We've got energies, which is what we've just done over here to get the speed. We also have kinematics as well at our disposal. That might not come into play on this one, but I want you to think about all of these things as you're doing these types of questions. Okay, so let's carry on with our force discussion, we know that we need to do, whenever we're doing forces, we're going to be thinking about F net expressions. Okay, so we're just going to add up all these forces. But we should also know that when we're dealing with an acceleration that's in a circular motion, we have this uh, centripetal acceleration. So the force acceleration centripetal 
is going to be equal to the only force of the, that caused that, which in this case is the force magnetic. And so we can say that the velocity times the mass, so the velocity squared times the mass over the radius, this is our equation that comes from circular motion, is equal to the force magnetic, which is going to be the result of the charge, the, the velocity, and the magnetic field. And what we should really do is say that the magnetic field perpendicular. And that's that's why we get this circular motion, because of this perpendicular force. And so this is a really important formula. And we'll, we'll start to break this down. And this will give us, of course, our radius. So let's rearrange this. First of all, we've got the two velocities are going to cancel out. And so then I'm going to have the velocity times the mass divided by the charge and the perpendicular magnetic field, and that's going to be equal to the radius. And if you plug all of these numbers in, which I've done here, you will get 4.98, lots of decimal places, times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Uh, again, it's worthwhile taking the time. We won't do it right now, but it's worthwhile taking the time to look at all the units. See what happens here. You can substitute in various different units for Teslas. What you need to make sure is that you end up with meters. Otherwise, you've done something wrong with your, uh, with your equation. Um, if you do that and you check, you end up with this value, 4.98. I'm going to just quickly check my significant digits up here. I've got three and three, so this needs to be two, three significant digits. So I'm going to say this is four, four decimal nine eight, and times ten to the negative two. Well, that's uh, that's centimeters. So there we go. That's the cur the radius of curvature of this circle. The circle would be here if it kept going around and around. So that's the radius of the circle. And is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, sorry, clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, this, the force pushing to the left means that it has to be a clockwise direction.